It's just connecting. Hi, I'm Evie Ohms Girl, and I'm connected here today with Courtney. Um, we're going to be talking about her journey and how you know she experienced specific things in her life, some trauma, the big C, and how she has you know gone in different avenues with education and exploring different parts of the world and different forms of healing, holistic healing, and how that has led her to her amazing company and movement. Um, hi, Hillary, you did make it. She did make it. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, to be able to create the wholesome alchemy and. Um, yeah, so we we talked briefly before going live, but um, yeah, you were saying that you've been busy today. Is that mostly with your company that you've been pretty busy, or personally, or both? Or yeah, definitely a lot for business and catching up because I've been traveling and some new creative adventures that we're moving into that have been a big part of today too. Amazing. Which hopefully we'll get to that more. Um, but traveling kind of begun even more for you. I think you were saying to me, you started with gymnastics and that sort of got a bit of the traveling bug going a little bit, but then that also made you realize that, you know, different cultures are different ways of, um, you know, doing things on a holistic level. Um, there's different forms of healing, right? So can you talk a little bit about sort of that experience and maybe how that led to when you had the big C and how you even thought to seek out other ways of healing? Yeah. Um, and that's a big <sighs> journey. <laughs> so it's a lot to share, but. Yeah. Uh, no, it's great. So I had been like very hyperactive my whole childhood and like constantly had teachers telling my parents that I was ADHD cool. and all of these things and had a really hard time learning how to regulate my energy and naturally be able to do that. And so that's kind of what brought me to like yoga. And then when I transitioned out of um, like g competitive cheerleading gymnastics and all that kind of stuff, it was just yoga felt like the next move. And that was kind of the first thing I found that helped me learn how to really be in my body, how to use my breath to move my energy, how to find balance and stillness in a way that I had never found in my entire life. Yeah. Um, so I, that was kind of like my first, I feel like healing modality that I found was yoga. And then I've studied it here in the States and something was missing for me and I wanted more philosophy and culture and just the roots, like, where did this come from? And so off to India, I went, and then that was also when I stumbled upon Ayurveda and I had had this like skin rash at the time. And had tried everything I could in the States, including Western medicine and some story creams and stuff and nothing worked. So I just switched to an Ayurvedic diet, switched to completely Ayurvedic based body care products and my skin healed. So then when I came back to the States, that kind of was part of what started the journey of like, okay, I want to learn how to make these products because there's got to be other people who are dealing with this. And that kind of like integrated Ayurveda into my life. And then, um, when, yeah, so then while all of this part of my journey was happening in college, I'd actually been raped and through this whole experience ended up developing like a STI, STD. And without my awareness, that was developing into cervical, I don't know if I can say the word, but <laughs> the big C, um, developed into that. And so then when that came up in my life and I needed to find healing and treatment, I knew that um, chemo was not the path I wanted to take. I had watched my grandfather kind of take that path and die a lot faster and, and just lose himself in a way that I knew wasn't going to be my journey. Um, and having already touched in Ayurveda, I uh, kind of was like, all right, well, I'm going to go back to India. I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to, you know, make it through this. I knew like for the, my entire life I had an impact to make things to create and do and be in the world. And so I went back and kind of dove deep into Ayurveda. And then throughout all of that, I went to China a few times. I learned Qigong and Chinese medicine. I'm from Wisconsin and met a lot of natives and learned a lot with like plant medicines and natural plant medicines. All plant medicines are natural, not necessarily psychedelic, but I mean like or more of the herbalism route and all that. And literally just any healing modality I could find, I was like, I want to learn more. I want to learn more. And it's kind of just been the, you have the a pretty path. big scope too, it seems like. 
I mean, you said you're 33. So for already, you know, I feel like you're an old soul that way because it's like, it seems like you've learned and just got a good handle of a lot of different modalities. I mean, I think they intertwine in a lot of ways with holistic and wellness, but um, is there one that you find you need more of or that you offer more of um, in your retreats or workshops, depending on the people that you're kind of serving or like, how do you feel with different modalities? Like, yeah, I would say my the ones I like uh, most often use and teach and share is obviously yoga, um, Ayurveda, and meditation. I just feel really called to like those kind of Eastern traditions, more from India and China. And Qigong is also one that comes into my retreats, and they all have a place. We do energy work in like all of the retreats, but not in the traditional Reiki way. It's more through actually Ayurveda and um, Chinese medicine and our meridian lines. And um, so I I found a way to find myself in all of them. So I never can say I'm like, teach, this is 100% Ayurveda or this is 100% herbal. You know, like it's all integrated and kind of become my own approach to everything that I've learned. Because just like you said, there are so many ties and similarities between these different tools and yeah, but Ayurveda yoga high up on the list. (laughs) Yeah. It's sort of what I actually enjoy about some of the West. Like I, I, I do enjoy some of the roots and I haven't been to India in this lifetime. Um, Although I do feel a lot of roots and a close friend, I call her my Indian sister. She's Indian in this life and we do yoga. um, But I do love in some ways some of like less of the dogma in a sense. Um, You know, you can get up at 5 a.m. and start meditating, but that doesn't have to be the way to, you know, find some of that inner peace and healing. And, you know, as you were saying, coming out of gymnastics and always being hyperactive, which I can totally resonate with that. (laughs) Say that I'd like light light bulbs. And my mom was like seven years later, had a second kid because I was just so hyper. Um, (laughs) So, yeah. But yeah, just being able to, because sometimes that I think for people, it can be overwhelming. Like, okay, how am I going to do all this stretching and getting up at five, where even just some of the simple breath work and mindfulness and taking those steps, I think can be so powerful in just, you know, and if if you have time or if you want to make it part of more your world, as you have with, you know, really going deeper into um, the different paths, and now you can teach it. Um, but, you know, it can be really powerful just in simple ways. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and so I love that because, you know, again, in the West, there is a bit more of this room, I think, to sort of integrate it all rather than um, there's this beautiful movie, The Art of Being. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's an Ayurveda mm-hmm. movie. It was my first sort of exposure to Ayurveda when I was doing okay. body work. I want to. Okay, yeah, it's cool. really interesting. You can get it actually on YouTube, and I think it's on iTunes. Okay. Um, the Art of Being. And um, it looks at a lot of different Ayurvedic practitioners, and some of them are like third generation deep. Yeah. Similar to, I think, some of the shamans in you know the Amazonian. It's like mm-hmm. they're third generation deep, which has a lot, a lot, a lot to offer. But I think um, it can be amazing when we can also take those steps, as you have with your own healing and now offering it in ways that you know, you're tapping into the depth and then the roots of it, but it doesn't have to be, you know, um, separate in that way where like, you know, just because your family isn't third generation, you know, you still have access to some of that truth and some of, you know, the power of some of the healing that it can offer. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My teacher in China, one of the things he said to me that like resonated on such a deep core level is exactly what you're speaking to. Mm He would always say that you become a true master of the teaching when you've integrated your teacher's truth through your voice, through your truth. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Like, that's how we really embody what we learn is find ourselves in the teachings, in the practice, in the wisdom and allow our truth to shine through because each of us have something amazing and have so much knowledge and wisdom innately within us and so when we gain these tools we can like mold it and find our truth within but i'm not saying like throw tradition out the window because i definitely yes have can even be sometimes rigid in like "Eh, it should probably be this way and like have had to like 
rein myself back and kind of be more gentle with that because I have studied under teachers who are like, this is the path. And so it's been a a balance, right? That's that's all of it. My younger can be a little bit more sort of like, this is how you do the posture, the asana. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas Hatha, I feel like there can be a little bit more room sometimes in regards to yoga with kind of listening to your body and, you know, but it is amazing that, yeah, you've studied. So can you speak a little bit more about your experience with yoga and just um, how you offer that in your in your retreats and a little bit more about um, the wholesome alchemy and how that came to be? I know you've studied all under these amazing you know, teachers and done a lot of your own studying, but what was it like? Was there a specific spark or a specific moment that you were like, OK, I had you to get this retreat going or I need to get this uh-huh. company going? Yeah. Um, so yoga was a, a gift for me. I feel like for most of it, I had no intention of becoming a teacher. I just wanted to learn as much as I could. That's why I have like over a thousand hours of teacher training. It was like, I want more. I want to learn more. I'm always going to be a student. Um, and then I felt like life just kept saying, it's time, like, it's time to do this. And I started uh, working at an intentional spiritual community in Colorado and then got put in that kind of role as leading all the yoga classes for the retreats and the programs and the events. And I was able to, I feel so honored and grateful for that because I was able to find deeply, deeply find and speak to my spirituality and my truth within my practice because it was at a spiritual community. And so I had the freedom to just like express truly as myself through it. So then when I left that, I was like, okay, what now? Like, I'm, I want to do something different than just teaching and like, what's the next move? And I remember asking spirit and then going into a meditation and just, it's, I just received it like so crystal clear Mm. the step-by-step retreat specifically a journey to the sacred the first retreat I ever held through wholesome alchemy just every detail of what it was going to be in like 10 minutes it was just like I wrote it all down and was like whoa I guess I'm ready I guess it's time and then about a few minutes after that I got a text message from a friend I hadn't connected with in probably like eight years who was like hey, I work at a retreat center, I'm running a retreat center, and we need more retreats. Like, would you be willing to host a retreat here? And it was like, yeah, okay, I just got my retreat, got the center I'm going to host at, and it was just like, yes. And that's kind of been like how I've lived my life. It's like when I feel that this is right, my answer is yes. Let's just keep saying yes. Let's just keep moving and like things open and unfold and and here I am. (laughs) And I think the more that you take a moment to just go inward as you were meditating and unsure, instead of trying to overanalyze it and like, you know, it's so easy, I think, in the fast paced world to like overanalyze and overthink it. And so many problems or obstacles, I feel like in that sort of way of thinking, it's so hard to solve them, where if you go inward, as you said, it's like the download or, you know, the information just came to you, it resonated with your heart. And then there was the sign right away, right? Where you could just, yeah. okay, this is it. All right, got it, you know? Yep. Yeah. And that's yeah. been all of them. It's been like, okay, that was successful. What What now? And it's like, actually, you're going to lead six retreats a year. And then it was like, oh, wow, okay. And then it was like, here's the next one. Here's the next one. Here's the next one. And it just like kept coming. And I'm like, all right, like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Even before that, like when you went to India, because – I was wondering, you know, you were um, in your mid twenties when you first went to India. Is that right? Yeah, I was my like twenty three, I think, when I went the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I mean, India isn't necessarily, you know, like um, Switzerland or something financially, but it still is like a big thing for early twenties, mid twenties financially, and just to have that kind of courage to take that step. But you said that you always trusted, and you sort of learn that even as a child, right? Was it your mother or father who said like, if you're a good person and good things come to you and you just sort of embodied some of that as well? Yeah. And I think that by the time that came, I'd already kind of lived that life of, of guiding and being, you know, just trusting. I'd always just pose the question. And I grew up in a family that didn't, didn't like 
wasn't religious, didn't talk about God or do any, like I had no awareness or knowledge of even what I was posing a question to or, you know, what even that was. I just knew that if I asked, there'd be an answer. And it was like, that's kind of, you know, it was always, whenever I hit a hard part in life, it'd be like, okay, what do I do now? And then it'd be like a lyric, like moving to Colorado. It was a lyric that came on the radio. It was like, move to Colorado, leave it all behind. And I was like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> like finding that spiritual community was similar i like slipped on a magazine and it was like opened up to this ad and it was just like all of these things and i'm like okay that's my next move and then it just kind of kept going and yeah i definitely yeah. feel like that with moving because i moved a lot within canada and there's always kind of these signs um when i moved to montreal just before that out of nowhere i wasn't sure which direction i was supposed to go to or where i was supposed to move and i wanted to do university and it was like everywhere I met, everywhere I went, all of a sudden I just heard Montreal, Montreal, Montreal. And I'm like, okay, mm. I got it. And same with um, before I visited Hawaii. Um, I don't know. I didn't really think I could do it, but it was like in two weeks, the universe was just like Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. My mom's like, yeah, just go. And I had, you know, some things saved or whatever. So I went and yeah, it's so interesting how that works. Um, okay, so last night I just wanted to go back to that time because you said you trusted. So when some of the trauma happened, um, like the sexual abuse, the rape that happened, in that time period, did you automatically trust as well and start to kind of step out of it? Or what was your first kind of um, like step to kind of come out of some of that darkness and start to heal? Because I know it was a process, you said, from that um, with the STD and then the big C so in that time, like what was going through your thought process or how did yeah. you, yeah, how did you manage? That? I would say those were my sloppy years. <laughs> um, I was, you know, in college. Yeah, yeah, I was 19. I was in college and I was, you know, sober when everything happened, but I was young and wild. I came from Wisconsin and, you know, I was, a, I, those were the years that I definitely labored a lot in a lot of things. Um, and so I feel like college was a time of just like play and seeing what the world looked like and a little less of the guidance and just like, yeah. But once I moved out of college and realized I wanted to just do more and be more with my life, um, I feel like that was like around, you know, I was 21, I think when I found yoga and, you know, I, that's like when those tools started to actually find me and then I feel like through those tools I was able to come back to realizing that there was some connection something more and then I started seeking and then it was just like that's why I traveled the world you know just seeking more knowledge more wisdom more truth more understanding um and just naturally fell back into that trust and that knowing that then led me fluidity sort of even in yeah yeah in that darkness and do you feel with all of your tools and offering your retreats even internally that a lot of the energy is dissipated from some of the trauma or do you feel like it's something that humans always kind of carry from your experience or is it like totally dissipated or i definitely say that there's there's cycles right i I feel like i'm like i'll move through it and then i'll have thought it would be completely healed and gone and then something will come through and i'll be like oh there's a little more work to do so right. I think that we have to have that like patience with ourselves because there's always going to be deeper layers that we're going to find through new experiences and interactions and encounters or whatever that kind of like trigger that back up. Yeah. Um, and I've done a lot of healing work around like my sexuality and sexual trauma and just like understanding myself and, and my loving my body and like moving through like body shame work and just I've done a lot of work to heal it. Like I've looked at it and looked at it and like, looked closer and felt it and cried and been angry. You know, I've, I've done the work. So I feel, I believe that that one is healed. <laughs> um, I definitely feel very healed through the my health journey. I feel so empowered by that one that I'm like, my body, I can heal absolutely anything. Like there's no worry or fear around anything that could ever happen to me physically again. Um, but just how you offer your retreats, because you really do feel empowered in that way, more than just teaching. And is that a lot of the people that sort of are gravitated and come is 
they're moving through some of their own trauma or are they celebrating life or a bit of both or what I kind of people like are gravitating towards your your retreats most do you find yeah different stages for sure and i think as i've found more clarity in like who i am and who i want to serve that's been changing I'd yeah. say we started more with people who were really moving through a lot of the the pain and the coming out of st suffering and trauma and things like that. But over the years, we've become truly like a hub for world leaders, like calling in the people who are, you know, our phrase is make your impact. So the souls that are like, I'm here for a purpose. Yeah. I matter. I have something to bring and create and to be. And I want to do my work so that I can do that work in the world. And like now the spaces are just filled with these powerful souls who often already are like, have their own successful businesses and have all these clients they're serving and all these things they're doing. And they're even on their path and like have the created so much of what they're doing, but there's more work to do. Right. And yes. it's about finding a community of people because when you have done the work at that level, it can be hard to find people who can meet you and hold you to go deeper into some of that healing that's left to be worked through. And right. so it's like now we've just cultivated this space of just epic souls who are like, we're doing this. Like we're making the world a better place by making ourselves better. And right. like through that work, everything we bring into the world just creates harmony and, and blessing and love and, and all of the amazing things. that. Ah, yeah. That. yeah. So I did tag um, Wholesome Alchemy. Is that the best way for people to kind of learn more is through your Facebook and your Instagram? Or should they just um, we'll put your website below? Or what's the best way that they can kind of learn more? And also about your skincare as well, right? Yeah. Websites probably are best. We have a okay. lot of like our foundation on there, the work we do in like Africa and all the, the schools and education and everything. Um, our karmic service kind of part of us. That's all on the website. Our product lines on the website, the creation of all of it, um, all of our retreats, testimonials, community. Yeah, like photos of everything. Websites probably like where you can get the most information. Um, yeah. Then the you Facebook page. Instagram's like a baby. I just created it not too long ago. So he's still like, I feel like not walking yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> infant status um but yeah website and then facebook and then my personal page i share the most on my personal page okay amazing well thank you so much for yeah thank connecting you. here and i love how the universe just brought us together and i was like oh my gosh can i interview you on wednesday and you're like yes As you, just, <laughs> you just say yes and i'm like so grateful that you did um, cause I yeah, feel you know, people do have a lot to learn from your story and your experience, even if they don't take the same path, um, and also your retreats and your website. So, um, thank you again for, yeah, connecting here today. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Have a beautiful mm -hmm. day. Thank Bye, you Courtney. Too. Bye.